Hi, welcome to Christine's Corner. I'm Christine. Um, my, I'm going to read you two books. They're both true stories. Um, how to throw a birthday party for a 105-year-old. True story, 105. This is the cover of the book. And here's the dog and grandma and another dog. And we're going to find out what's their name. In just a second. It's fun to throw a party for a 105 year old. Here's how to do it. First, make sure she wants a party. Ask her and hope she says yes. So here's the poodle. And here's the grandma that's 105 years old. Oh, did I, I didn't I forgot to mention that the um, person who wrote and illustrated all of this whole book is written and illustrated by Rose Petruzzi. P E T R U Z Z I. And inspired by Pootie. That's the name of the one of the poodles, and Megan, and their grandmother. If she says yes, start planning. Find out what she wants. So make a list. Maybe the right here shown a chalkboard. Lots of hearts with a lot of love. The grandma and Pooty and Megan. Here's Pooty and here's Megan. Want the stars, the moon, the sun. Make a list. Date, time, place. Invitations, guests, food and drinks, cleaning, decorations, party favors. Everything for a great party. So you can see here, see the food. You're going to bring food and the party favors, those things that you, you blow into, and it goes. <laughs> Find out who would like to pitch in. I'll clean the house. Another one says, I'll bring the veggies and dip. I'll set the table. We'll make a cake. We'll go pick her up. That, sound, that sounds like a good list, doesn't it? Here's all the people. Or it's not just one, it's many people. So it's not on, on one person. So it helps make, create a party, especially for a 105 year old. Wow. A lot of people are going to be at that party. I know it's this day with the virus, it's hard to get, you can't get a party together unless it's outside. Someday we'll get back to it. When the day arrives, be ready, be very thankful, and have a whole lot of fun. Here we got a butterfly, and here's Megan and Tootie. Pooty, I'm sorry. And there's the house. Isn't it great illustrations? I love her drawings. Especially the dogs. Make sure the guest of honor arrives safely and is comfortable. So here's the people. And here's the grandma. And they got she's got a little bubbly drink. Next to her, Pootie and Megan. Make her feel very, very special because she is. Listen, that they're all smiling. Even the dogs are smiling. The poodle. I hope I'm not going too fast for you. Shower her with love, kindness, and joy. 
because you can. See, all the love and the kindness that comes from you, from you and your relatives and your friends. We're all smiling and wanting to have fun and have a good day. And then the, the house is all de decorated and then you wait. You wait for all the people to come through. You got, see, all her friends and family are there. Balloons that say she's 105. And until the door opens and everyone she has ever known walks through. That's a lot of people because she's, she's pretty old so she's got a lot of relatives. She's got moms and grandmas and nieces and cousins and nephews. Everybody. They're all ready to say surprise grandma. And they see the beautiful table that is prepared. Because it took the whole family, everyone brought something and made the table. Look at all that food. Yummy. And all the photographs, which tell a wonderful story. They have pictures of. Grandma and Grandpa, when they play sports, family and parents, and loved ones, daughters, and everyone there, all kinds of pictures to take to remember all those years, 105. That's a long time. She's seen it and gone through a lot of stuff. You lose yourselves in the joy of the moment. There's so much laughter and eating and singing and dancing and fun. Oh, so much fun. Look at them all having fun. Even the dogs just jump, jumping for joy. We've got the baby here. We've got everyone of all ages here. And there, and then there's a hush. And one of the guests makes a toast. Then someone else stands up. And then another speaks. Until all that needs to be said is said. There's more pictures. Everyone talking and saying how great grandma is and times that they shared with her and what they did. That's a lot of fun. Everyone sings happy birthday. And the very happy birthday girl blows out all the candles. Can you imagine 105 candles? Whew! Call the fire department. And that's how you throw a party for a 105 year old. See, she blew out all 105 candles. That's a lot of candles. That's got to be a big cake too. Look, she even has her booty and Megan. About Sharina Stella Delpo Petruzzi. Rina, better known as Nani, is a major inspiration for this book. At 105 years old, she never ceases to amaze us with her indomitable spirit. She advises us to trust in God, take care of our health, be honest, and be useful. About Helen Louise Shea, Helen, also known as Fanny, Nana, and Grandma, by her 27 grandchildren, 27 grandchildren, really knew how to throw a party. No expense was spared to make sure everyone had a great time. Memories of those events live on and inspire us. About Pootie and Megan, the two poodles, since my last book, which I'm going to read to you, did I tell you I love you today? Pootie has a sister. Her name is Megan, like Pood, she is 11 years old and a miniature poodle, but a bit big smaller. 
She is a terrific companion and has her own quirky personality. They are like two poodles in a pod. This book is dedicated to Rosemary Shea Petruzzi and Leonard Joseph Petruzzi. Mom and Dad, thank you for your love, support, and all the wonderful times we've shared as a family. It's how to throw a birthday party for a 105-year-old. Um, now I'm going to read you the next book I was telling you about. In this book, and it's called, Did I Tell You I Love You Today? A true story about how a heart, heart grew. I'm just going to take a sip of my water. Inspired by Pudi, illustrated and written again by Rose Petruzzi. Here's the beginning of the book. She did all the illustrations in here. All of them. This book is dedicated to you with great love, joy, and gratitude. There once was a spectacular being, a warm, fuzzy being at that, named Pood. Pood knew her purpose since the day she was born, and that was to love. There she is right there. Isn't she cute? She lives what is in her heart and simply thinks, or sometimes says, did I tell you I love you today? See all the hearts and poop and smiling. She's always smiling. Did I tell you I love you this morning when I opened my eyes to see you? She just pours out that love, doesn't she? Isn't that beautiful? Did I tell you I love you for creating me just the way I am? There she is in all different plane, pouncing around. Did I tell you I love you for so, so generously providing me everything I need? So you can see, she's, she feeds them, there's her food, dog food, sort of water, and a little bed that she can lay down in. Look at all the love that just keeps pouring from her. All these hearts. Did I tell you I love you today because my heart sings with joy? Oh, just so cute. Did I tell you I love you today for feeling one with all your creations? See the butterfly and a cat over here, a little worm, a bee. Now, I hope you can see all these. A bird and a turtle down here. And then, of course, there's po food. Did I tell you I love you today for all the beauty that surrounds us? All the pretty flowers. All different kinds of flowers there. And there's food hiding out in the flowers. Did I tell you I love you today for making this earth our home a paradise? There's a str stream and some tulips, all kinds of tulips. There's food. Did I thank you today for all your great gifts? Did I tell you I love you today for opening my heart, mind, and body to all my wonderful gifts? Isn't that pretty? All the hearts, all the love, and there's food. Did I tell you I love you today because you are here with me? There she is here, and there is Pooh, just comfortable and relaxing on her chair. 
both of them snuggled together. Did I tell you I love you today for guiding and protecting me? She walks with her no matter where she goes. Isn't that cute? Did I tell you I love you for inspiring me to do my best? That's here we are again with her 105 year old grandmother and all the kids playing with poop. And over here is somebody playing baseball, throwing the ball to a poop. Did I tell you I love you for sharing this miraculous day? There she is right there. There's the house and the stars and the moon. Did I thank you today for all your love? Isn't that cute? Did I tell you today that I love you with all my heart? There they are, right there. About Poot. Pootie, Pootie was the brainchild of Rose's husband, Chris Cocosa, in the spring of 2001. Having grown up with poodles, he knew how wonderful it was to have a canine member of the family, so he went looking for a dog to rescue. He found Pootie, a cowering, aloof two-year-old miniature poodle with soulful eyes. Pood learned to adapt to her new home and eventually became a major influence in the lives of both Rose and Chris. Her gentle, steady, unconditional love is a constant reminder of forces at work greater than ourselves. She nudges us to look at ourselves, our world, and our lives with gratitude, to appreciate, appreciate all that has been given to us. Special thanks to Chris Koza, Jan Pernova, who, Nicole Lilly, and my editor Virginia Small for all your support. Most of all, I'd like to thank Pooty, the co-creator of this dream come true. I love you, Rose. And she signed a book for me, too. And there's Pootie. The real, the real Pootie. Now we have some, we have some time left. And I am going to show you what I made at Springfield College in my uh, clay, my clay course. And this is called the uh, Ocarina. Ocarina. Ocarina, sorry, Ocarina, and um, how I made that was, was with clay, and you have a ball, and you put it in the shape that you want, and then you cut it in half, and you, you carve out the inside so that the, you can get air inside, and then this right here is a hole right there, punch a hole in there for sound, and another one right here so you can blow into it. But you got to get it just right so the sound comes through both here and there's also I got four holes in here so so it's a it's another way of uh, another flute if you want to hear and then I as you notice I covered the holes with my fingers but if you want to make different sounds you let go of each one that you want so the sound is like this. Isn't that pretty cool? I thought so too. There's some that made them better than me. They had different sizes and shapes and colors. Um, I even had a real Indian play this for me because I really didn't know I ever learned how to play a flute. And the sounds that he came made out of this is much better than what I can do here, but it's pretty cool, right? It does sound sort of Indian-like, doesn't it? I think so. And then I have another instrument here, 
and um, it's a baby rattle. It's a, a Chinese rattle drum. Um, and you twirl it like this. You can go like this. Or just one hand. But it's pretty cool. It's for the baby, but I find myself playing with it. And then we have one more, Morocco. And um, this wasn't made. I didn't make this, but it's pretty cool. And yeah, probably has yeah, maybe a little popcorn or something in there. I, I don't know what, what's in there, but as you see, it's really decorated, really pretty, pretty cool. Um, I got this down in Mexico, and um, I love it. So maybe you have some instruments around, around your house that you play, even just the pots and pans. I you know at this time, it, it's um, hard to get out of the, where you are and of the coronavirus, and maybe you can find some thing around that makes a, any kind of sound, and you can even write music with the words. But um, thank you for tuning in to Christine's Corner. And I'll see you again next week. Thank you for joining. And I hope you enjoyed these true stories, stories of um, the 105-year-old and Cootie. Thank you.